The year is 3037, and Shadowwood is dead. Of course, you knew that already. Like most children left on Earth, I grew up listening to the legends about Shadowwood. They protected the world in secret, never after fame or fortune. But after the climate wars, the time came when they made themselves known. Humanity found out about Shadowwood and the existence of aliens. There was a panic at first, you know what humans are like. But under the guidance of Shadowwood, there was peace. Those who came through the gaps in space and time were no longer forced to conceal their identity, but welcomed with open arms. Millennia passed and all was well. Thousands of species lived side by side. Culture and technology progressed much faster than any other world. There was the occasional skirmish or attempted invasion, but for the most part, it was a golden age. As they say though, nothing lasts forever. The rapture occurred roughly 200 years ago. Angels of death, beings known as the luminaries, appeared one day emerging from the rifts in their legions. They only took the worthy ones, the ones they saw as more evolved. They took them and made them angels too. The rest of us were left to rot. Word of the rapture must have spread throughout the universe. Many alien armies came to Earth hoping to take advantage of what had happened. Shadowwood tried to protect us, but how could they after most of their agents were taken? Each day, Another empire attempted to take over. Each day, more deaths. Shadowwood's last mission was one of evacuation. Millions fled through the rifts. No one knows where they ended up, but the rifts couldn't handle the strain. Reality was bent out of shape, and now most of the planet is uninhabitable. The surviving pockets of life are left separated by vast oceans of dimensional disruption. Most who enter the disruption never return, but those who do talk about being saved. They say there's a man out there, the last living member of Shadowwood, a man who can never die. They say that in your darkest hour, when all hope is gone, he'll be there. His name has been lost to time. People just call him the Forever Man. I shivered as I approached the battered metal box that sat at the top of the hill. Maintenance duty was boring, monotonous, and time-consuming, but everyone has to do their part to keep the settlement running. I popped open a hatch on the metal box and removed a dried-up capacitor. The capacitors were clever little things. When activated, they siphoned energy from the nearest power source, then stored that power to be used later. I took a new capacitor from my satchel and plugged it into the box. The capacitors had been running out of power much faster than usual, and for some reason, I was always the one that ended up having to replace them. There was one part of the job I enjoyed, though, and that was completing it. After a day of going from power box to power box, I always chose to tend to the box on the hill last. The second I plugged in the new capacitor, the whole settlement burst into light, and from the hilltop, I could see everything the entire settlement, an island of buildings surrounded by a sea of green pastures contained within the circular perimeter wall. 
I watched as the newly illuminated inhabitants chatted and laughed as they walked from the farmland back to their homes and towards the town hall. I could even just about see the outlines of the people on guard duty as they patrolled the borders of the settlement, making sure nothing from the fields of distortion could slip into our little safe haven. The reality disruption warped the beams of the setting sun, coating the town hall in vivid purple light. I set my eyes back on the town hall. It was a sturdy wooden building that, after years of repairs and modifications, had an odd, almost manic appearance, with extensions poking out of odd places and a roof made of about 30 different materials. I peered in through the windows. Some of the elders were in deep discussion, likely assigning the next day's duties. I willed them to put my name down for guard duty, although I knew they wouldn't. At 19 years old, I still had two years to go until I was eligible. I wasn't sure why we still had a guard duty. Nothing from outside had gotten in in generations. I just wanted the opportunity to take a peek over the perimeter wall, see what there is beyond the settlement. But for now, I had to be content with just sitting on that hill. Something drew my attention away. A flash of red. The anomalous spark came from somewhere around the old statue which stood at the edge of the farmland. The statue was forged of metal and depicted a human running while clutching something. When I was a toddler, someone on mothering duty told me that at night, the statue came alive and chased the monsters away. I always used to dream of joining the metal man on his adventures. Sure enough, I saw the red flash again. A scarlet bolt of energy snarked its way up the statue before shooting off towards the perimeter wall. And just like that, I didn't have to wait for guard duty anymore. I had an excuse. Clutching my satchel of capacitors tight, I bounded down the hill and dashed towards the border. Jaxel was by far the oldest resident of the settlement. She was alive even before the rapture. Some say she was old as the statue itself. Despite that, though, I never thought of her as one of the elders. Maybe that was because, unlike the other older townsfolk who spent their later days deciding who does which duty and fulfilling most other administrative roles within our tiny society, she demanded that she was always on guard duty, day and night. I suppose after being alive that long and being from a species that doesn't require rest or sleep, you end up seeing some pretty horrific stuff. More than enough to make anyone paranoid. That's why it was her who I tried to find once I made it to the perimeter wall. If anyone else had noticed the red bolt, it would be Jaxel. As I neared the wall, I felt excitement buzzing in my stomach. The concrete wall was about 10 times my height and covered in the etchings and graffiti of many of the people who have at some point served as guard. I grasped the lowest rails of a tall rusting ladder and began the ascent up the wall. The further up I got, the more determined the wind seemed to pull me back down. I'll admit I was terrified, but when I spotted Jaxel walking along the top of the wall, a plasma rifle in her ancient hands, my fear died down a little bit. After all, if she could make this climb every day at her age, I should be able to pull it off without a hitch. I got to the top of the wall and just stood there with only a steep drop and some railing separating me from the wider world. I could see for miles, and I instantly understood why the elders deemed me too young to be here. I wasn't ready for what I saw. I'm not sure how anyone could be. I saw that my home, the idyllic fields, the quaint buildings, the happy people, was so small. On my hill, I thought I could see everything, but I saw nothing of this real world. The settlement was an oasis in a desert of chaos. I remembered something old Jaxel said to a boy before his first guard duty. She said, Our job is not to make sense of the world outside, just to make sure that the world stays outside. In that moment, I quickly learned to appreciate how good a piece of advice that was. If I tried to make sense of what I saw, even just to put it in words, I think I'd probably go mad. I hope by the time you listen to this, reality will be back to normal. The universe will have stitched itself back together. 
but how could anything stitch a wound so deep? And how could anyone stop the creatures that emerged from that wound? I tore my eyes from the madness and once more set about finding Jaxel. It wasn't long until I found her, and I soon regretted that I had. Jaxel, the woman whom everyone had known for all their lives, who offered comfort and protection since the founding of the settlement, lay dead, her face frozen permanently in an expression of most primal fear. Her eyes, which had witnessed a thousand years of history, seemed to have been completely burned away, leaving only scorched sockets. For the most part, her outward body seemed untouched, but everything below the skin and muscle had clearly been singed. Somehow, she was incinerated from the inside. Don't think I enjoyed describing how I found Jaxel. I only went into detail to make sure you understand the threat we were dealing with then. The threat we might have to deal with again. That's the point of this whole thing, isn't it? To make sure others are prepared for what may come? For a few minutes, I did nothing. What else could I do? My whole worldview had been shaken, and then, mere seconds later, I had found the woman I looked up to dead. I'm not sure if I cried. I just remember feeling as if nothing would be okay again. I looked back to Jaxel. I saw this time that she was clutching a bronze bell in her hand, one that was given to everyone on patrol in case of emergency. I noticed that she had whittled an intricate carving of the Forever Man onto the bell's handle. I believe Jaxel may have been the first to tell me his legend, although she was definitely not the last. Everyone in the settlement is a storyteller. That's how it's always been. That's what makes it worth carrying on, despite all the odds. Because we all live on in the stories we tell. At the end of the day, though, that's all they are. Stories. There is no forever man. No immortal shadow wood agent, ready to swoop in and save the day at the last second. In real life, you have to step up and do things yourself. So that's what I did. I took the bell and rang it as hard as I could. The brassy tones echoed throughout the settlement. An hour later, the elders stood at the doors of the town hall, their ceremonial masks fastened hastily to their heads. We ask you all to remain calm, one began. There's nothing to fear. We give our word. <laughs> nothing to fear? I found Jaxel murdered in an impossible way, and they stood there telling the crowds that there was nothing to fear? I hadn't rang that bell, causing everyone to abandon their jobs for this. Jaxel was a beloved and valued member of our community, another elder chimed in. But she also was very old and had grown increasingly unwell over these last months. We are lucky that Galeen found Jaxel's body and alerted us to it when they did. Otherwise, the body may have gone unnoticed for days or even weeks. It is for this reason that we have delegated some people from farming and construction duties to guard duty instead. Not because we believe that Jaxel's death was due to something from beyond the wall. May you find comfort in Jaxel's passing, should your faiths allow. With that, the elders bowed and began to file back into Town Hall. The purpose of their masks is to symbolize the values of the settlement. Their faces are obscured to show that the settlement does not work in the favor of any single species, but is a community for all. Personally, I just think they're there so you can't tell when they're lying. I was going to bring up my grievances before the elders got away, but as I opened my mouth, someone cut me off. Heathens! blurted someone from within the crowd. There were a few gasps as everyone turned to identify who had shouted. Even the elders had halted to see who it was. In the center of the gathering was a small man in a farmer's uniform, holding his furry hands to his mouth. His green blood vessels flared to the surface of his skin as he battled against his own voice. 
idolatrous, heathen, scum. The man screamed before stuffing his fingers into his throat in an attempt to choke out his words. Nobody knew what to make of the situation. Who were his strange cries directed at? Was he even in control of what he was saying? Because it certainly seemed as if he wasn't. He slumped over, trying to get his fingers farther down his gullet. Then, violently, he swung back up, his eyes glowing, searing red. Filth! He shrieked, as if his vocal cords were being torn to shreds by every syllable. All of you are filth! You have lived as filth! You shall die as filth! You shall be reborn as filth! Your time to repent has long since died! Judgment has been passed! A blinding burst of scarlet erupted from his body before the man crashed lifelessly into the dirt. Like Jaxel, he too had his eyes burned from his face. You are all to go home and remain there until you are told to do so. Now, commanded one of the elders, and everyone obliged. As those around me began to hurry back to their abodes, something caught my eye. Something right on the edge of the farmland. For a split second, I swear I saw a stream of red energy curling back around the old statue. I stared blankly, trying to connect the dots, the energy came from the statue, presumably killed Jaxel, possessed that man, and forced him to say those strange things. Killed him, then returned to the statue. But why? How? It made no sense. Galeen! An elder called out. As much as we appreciate what you have done, you have already broken the rules once today. Now, do as everyone else is doing and return home. There was no chance I was going to do that. The second the final elder went inside, I dashed over to the statue. I scraped away the grime and moss that had been building up over the years and tried to locate the source of the energy, some form of switch or device. There was nothing of the sort. For all intents and purposes, it was just a normal human sculpture. An exceptionally old one, but still a normal one. Then a thought dawned on me. I wasn't sure whether it would help me much, but at least it would prove that what I saw was possible. I took a capacitor from my satchel, removed the safety circuit, and pointed it at the statue. Electricity flooded out of the thing and snaked around the metal man just as the red energy had, which meant it was being conducted. The power had to end up somewhere. But where? Little did I know, I just awoke something which had been dormant for far too long. I jolted downwards abruptly before coming to an abrupt stop. The patch of earth on which I stood had sunk about a meter. I started to scramble back up when I locked eyes with the statue. I felt as if he was telling me to prepare, to get ready for what comes next. My whole life, every story I'd ever heard, all of it was leading up to this. I stopped trying to get back onto land and allowed myself to go further, deeper down. The light above me diminished as my chance at turning back grew slimmer. At first, I wasn't sure where this secret lift was taking me. I descended for what seemed like hours down that duct in the earth, until finally the tunnel gave way to an enormous underground chasm. I thought I had entered some sort of cave system, but... Then a booming automated voice announced. Unregistered life form detected. All necessary Shadowwood agents have been informed. The lift at last came to a halt. I stepped off the platform and took a second to collect myself. I stood in the exact spot so many of my heroes had stood before me. This place had been underneath me my whole life, and I never realized. Perhaps this is why the settlement has always been safe from disruption, because it was built on top of a shadow wood hub. Despite being abandoned for hundreds of years, the secret base displayed few signs of deterioration. I seemed to be in a sort of command center. Desks were arranged in a circle around a flickering hologram of the earth. I walked further into the room to investigate, and the lift, of its own volition, 
began to rise back up to the surface. I started to panic. That lift was my only way out after all. I dashed over to one of the desks and switched on the computer, hoping to find some way to bring the platform back down. The computer refused to work with me. Every time I pressed a key, an angry-looking alert would open up, stating, Secure Cell 19 breached. Immediate action required. This didn't concern me. The hub had been inactive for millennia. Any prisoner within would be either dead or far too old to cause me any harm. The more I clicked, the more alerts popped up. Unregistered life form detected. That one was my fault. Generator energy siphoned. I could probably fix that if my life wasn't at risk. Secure cell 19 breached. Yes, I knew that already. A sharp pain in my fingers caused me to spring back from the computer. The keyboard sizzled with red energy. Certainly the same stuff which had caused so much chaos in the settlement. The energy surged from the keyboard into the computer. Was that all it was? Some sort of alien computer glitch? I knew Shadowwood used to collect and test experimental technology. Maybe this was just one of their experiments gone awry. I was proven wrong almost instantly. The red energy, whatever it was, had a mind of its own. The hologram in the middle of the room warped and contorted into a face. At least, I think it was meant to be a face. Judgment has been passed, the face declared. I slowly began to back away. Every computer in the room crackled with scarlet light. Judgment has been passed, it reiterated. Judgment on who? I managed to ask. All life has been judged. All has been deemed an abomination. Your souls are tainted so far beyond redemption. You cannot be saved, only destroyed. Deadly crackling forks of light fired up from the hologram, hurtling towards me at an unfathomable pace. I pulled my head into my chest, hoping to protect myself, but I knew that wouldn't be enough. Soon, I would be just like Jaxel and that man outside the town hall. Someone materialized in front of me, wielding a sword above his head. Instead of pummeling into me, the energy impacted the sword, electrifying it. The man then swung the weapon, propelling the scarlet luminescence out of sight, as if he was hitting a ball away with a bat. This action all but disintegrated the blade of the sword, so he tossed the now useless hilt aside. What are you doing in my base? He questioned. Y your base? Yes, although I haven't been here in a long, long time. You haven't been living here, have you? Not that it matters, really. I don't suppose squatters' rights are a thing anymore. But if this is your base, then that means... I paused in disbelief. You must be forever, man. The stranger winced in faux pain. I wish people would stop calling me that, he exclaimed. The name's Norton Folgate. I I'm... I'm... Galeen, just Galeen. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, just Galeen. You set off the hub's alarm, which meant I had to teleport back here, which is something I swore I would never do. Nobody is supposed to be down here. Only Shadowwood operatives are permitted to enter and, well, there are none of those left. Not except me, of course. So do tell me, what are you here for? I was chasing that thing, that energy thing. It's killed two people in the settlement above, I explained. What actually is it? It's called the message, he began. It's a living legend, literally. It was made a long time ago by an alien civilization as a way of spreading their religion. I suppose it's a sort of sentient energy preacher. Unfortunately, it tends to react badly with humanoid species, fries their insides. It also doesn't help that it's gone a bit mad in its old age. Shadowwood captured it a long time ago, kept it here in the hub. Since nobody's been around to keep an eye on the place, it's found a way to escape. Luckily, you have me, 
and I will do whatever I can to stop the message before it can cause any more harm. You have my word, Galeen. You don't have to fight it alone. I could help you, I offered. But he refused. Told me I was too young. Told me he didn't want to put me at risk. The same reasons the elders gave when they wouldn't let me go on guard duty. Please, I've been dreaming about adventure, about Shadowwood since I was a hatchling, I pleaded. There was a pause. Then he huffed. Fine, you can help me. Go through that corridor there and take a right. That's the armory. Go grab a few guns and we'll be on our way. I followed his instructions. I went through the corridor, I turned right, I opened the silver featureless door, stepped through and... I was back outside the town hall. He tricked me. Somehow the door had deposited me right where I didn't want to be. Desperately, I dashed back to the statue. I took a capacitor from my satchel, hoping to once more re-energize the hidden platform. I removed the safety circuit, but there was nothing. It was empty. I took out another, and it produced a similar result. Eventually, I went through every single capacitor. All of them were empty. Let me back in! You need me! I screamed at the statue, using all the air in my lungs, but nothing changed. I had been denied my chance of adventure by the very man I thought would grant me that wish. You need me, I said again, much weaker that time. No, disagreed an elderly woman as she put her hand on my shoulder. Nobody needs you. Looking behind me, I saw that it was one of the elders who'd made this remark. What did you just say? Nobody needs you, the elder reiterated. Nobody needs anyone like you. Nobody needs the unbelievers, the heretics, the abominations. And so, I must remove them. The elder carefully took off her mask revealing the same burning red eyes that marked the face of the man from earlier. As I backed away, more elders spilled out of the town hall, standing in a line like an old-fashioned firing squad. They raised their arms and fired volleys of red heat from their palms, scorching the nearby wooden structures. Judgment has been passed, they chanted over and over. The closest elder practically threw herself at me, her hands poised like talons, I jumped out of the way, letting her crash into the dirt. She shot right back up and then just stared at me with frenzied rage as the firing squad progressed through the settlement. She raised her fist to strike me, but couldn't follow through. She was too weak. Beneath her skin, I saw flames. Her body couldn't handle the message for much longer. Message! cried Norton as he arose from beneath the statue. The failing host lost interest in me and turned to face the Forever Man. My name is Norton Folgate, he addressed. I represent the now defunct Shadowwood Institute. We know who you are, declared the message, speaking through the elder's lips. Then you'll know that I was one of the people that first imprisoned you in the hub. Don't think you're up here causing chaos because you're winning. You're only up here because I haven't been around to check on you. I mean, it's been a couple millennia and you've only just managed to claw your way out. There have been difficulties, the red energy admitted. I assure you, everything you've been through is nothing compared to me. Your pride blinds you, little man said the message as the other possessed elders emerged from the embers of the settlement to surround him. You are exactly what we want. The human form is weak. It breaks down. It dies. You are the forever man. You do not die. You shall carry the message for the rest of eternity. The energy vacated its hosts and accumulated into a bright orb above us. It floated for a moment, surveying its destruction, before darting down towards Norton. If he became possessed, 
There would be no stopping what was to come. I had to do something, had to think. This wasn't just a chance to prove myself. This was a chance to save the universe. As I ran, everything around me moved slowly. I saw the first few fingers of scarlet light caress Norton's face, preparing to enter his mind. I went down to my knees and allowed myself to skid in front of the man, a cloud of dust being kicked up in my wake. Mid-movement, I took an empty capacitor from my satchel. I removed the safety circuit. Click. The message was dragged into my device in a whirlwind of electricity. Destructive of Scarlet struck out furiously as the energy creature struggled to resist the pull. But in the end, there was nothing it could do. I secured the cap firmly in place and handed the capacitor to Norton. He assessed the metal cylinder, then gave me an approving nod. He clipped the capacitor to his belt. The now contained message would be a handy weapon in a crisis. I'm sorry about what it did to your settlement and to your elders, said Norton. I told him that it was probably about time there was some change around here. Maybe that change would arise from what happened. I should have been paying more attention, he stated. There are dormant hubs all around the world, each with their own monsters and secrets locked away in the vaults. I spent all this time running away from the past. I think it's about time I start keeping an eye on it. Maybe you could use some help with that. If there are hubs across the globe, you won't be able to monitor them all at the same time. You might need someone to hang back, someone to make sure that the monsters and secrets stay in their cells? Someone like me? And that's how I got here. This is my fifth day on guard duty. Not guarding the walls of the settlement, though. This guard duty is slightly different. Norton didn't stick around for very long after the ordeal, but he'll be back if I need him, or more likely, if he needs me. Until then, I've got this. The Shadowwood Archive. The system that holds the first-hand records of every Shadowwood mission. Every adventure. Enough stories to last a lifetime. And then some. I haven't had a chance to take a peek yet. I thought it was only right that I should write my own entry first, but now I've got that out of the way. So, who knows what fantastic tales await me. Date of Entry August 4th, 3037. Agent designation, Galeen. Shadowwood Archive, reactivated.